I made a modern knockdown stool or side table. I don't really know what it is. I recently did a video with Family Handyman where I showed how to build this side table slash knockdown stool, but basically just using a jigsaw and plywood. So if you're interested in that video, I'll put a link down below. I wanted to experiment with some different materials from that build and also to experiment with some more precise methods of joinery. So here's that video. Before we get started, huge thank you to this week's sponsors, 3in1 and Squarespace. If you head on over to squarespace.com slash Tamar, you can get a free trial. And when you're ready to purchase, use the code Tamar at checkout for 10% off your first order. Let's get started. I started this project by breaking down some soft maple into manageable sized pieces and then brought them over to the planer to clean them up. They were flat enough that I didn't need to use my jointer sled for the planer and I was able to get them flat on both sides. I don't have a jointer so I used a straight edge with a flush cut trim bit to clean up one of the edges. I'm going to square up the other edge on the table saw and I just picked up this new ripping blade. So pitch and resin can build up on your blades which will cause them to act like they're dull when they aren't. So I used this 3-in-1 100% dry to touch dry lube to prevent that pitch from building up on the blade and it will perform like it's new longer. After applying the lube it's completely dry and the blade is ready to rip again. Soft maple is notorious for leaving burn marks so I was pretty happy with those cuts. The two parts that make up the base are 20 inches tall by 10 inches wide so I glued up two boards to get to that width and I glued up both of the panels at the same time making sure not to glue them together. I used a paint scraper to scrape off any of the squeeze out and then brought it to the table saw to clean up one edge and then flipped it over and set up my stop lock so that I can make repeatable cuts on both of the boards. To join the boards for the base, I'm going to be using a half lap or a cross lap, I'm not really sure what to call it. So I marked the center on the face on one board and then marked the center on the edge of the other board. This way I can line up the second board on top of the first board to get the perfect location and width for the lap joint. Next, I marked half the length of the board, which was about 10 inches, so that I could set up a stop for the table saw. When setting the stop, just make sure the teeth of the blade don't go past your mark. Then I set the fence so my teeth were perfectly aligned with the cut lines, and then I ripped up until I got to the stop block. I turned off the saw and then repeated the same process on the other side. The stop block and fence were perfectly positioned so that I could run the other board through as well. And then to clean up the middle part, I took it over to my bandsaw and I extended the cuts where the round blade could not reach and I cleared up most of the waste as I possibly could. To finish cleaning up the joint, I used a marking knife with a straight edge to mark off a clear definition of where I wanted the joint to start and so that I could place my chisel into that knife line and chisel down and clean up the joint. There's just something so super satisfying about slowly sneaking away at the fit of a joint and then doing that first test fit and hearing that click at the end. Awesome. So the base of the stool is going to sit in a mortise that's cut in the top. So I cut some plywood to the thickness of the base pieces to make a jig and then cut those up into some smaller pieces. I'm going to be creating a template that's in the shape of an X so that the base will fit in. So I marked about two inches on each edge of those bigger scrap pieces that I found. And then I lined up those smaller scrap pieces that were the thickness of the material. And then I taped them up so I could prepare to glue them together. I used a combination of regular wood glue and CA glue so that it will hold together for a long time. And it would also set quickly because of the CA glue. And then I clamped it up but I realized that I needed to put in some sort of spacer to keep it level. So I put that piece of scrap in the middle there off camera. And then I started to line up the other side of the J to complete the X. Then I repeated the same process on the last pieces using regular wood glue and CA glue that I realized that the spacer that I put in the middle there was actually facing in the wrong direction for this glue up. So I just uh, flipped it around and then it was good to go. For the top, I'm going to be using this piece of spalted maple that I had already cut into a circle in a previous video where I showed how to cut a circle without making a hole in the center of your board. Turns out I didn't really matter for this project because I'm going to be cutting a hole in it anyway. So I marked out the X and then I brought it to my drill press and I began to hog out the mortise. At first I started with this small skinny little bit and then I quickly realized that this was taking a little bit longer than it should 
So I swapped out to a larger bit and that was a lot easier. I wasn't able to reach the center of the X on my drill press, so I finished it off using my hand drill and that worked fine. To clean up the mortise, I'm going to be using the template that I had made earlier that was in the shape of the X and use a flush cut trim bit with my router. But before putting the router in there, I need to knock down all of those points that are sticking out because that would not be safe to put a router in there when all those little pointy parts are sticking out. This was really quick to do and it does not need to look pretty at all. So now it's ready for the template. I used some double-sided tape, maybe more than I should have, and I placed it on so that it would not move. And then I used my router with the flush cut trim bit and I traced that X to make the mortise. And if you've ever questioned if double-sided tape is strong enough, it is super strong. I could not get it off with the chisel. I had to ping it off with the mallet. And I didn't need the template anymore to clean up the rest of the cut because there was already a clean X that the bearing could ride on but my flush cut trim bit wasn't long enough to clean up the rest of the hole, so I flipped the board over and used a template bit that has the, the bearing on the bottom of the bit that it could ride along the bottom and clean up the whole X to make a perfect looking X mortise. Now that the mortise was done, I could mark out the tenons. I measured the thickness of the top and marked that onto the legs. Then I measured how wide the mortise is so I can make that mark onto the legs as well. Just notice when I'm marking these tenons, one of the boards has the half lap or cross lap at the top and one of them has the half lap at the bottom. Then I set my table saw blade to the height of the mark that I had made earlier, that was the thickness of the top. And then I set my stop block so that the blade was cutting right at the line for the correct thickness of the tenon. Then I clamped my piece down and made the cut. All I had to do was make the same cut on all four sides of these panels making sure that one of the panels had the cross lap or half lap at the bottom and one of them had it at the top. To complete the joint, I took the panels and put it onto its side. Then I raised the blade up to that cut line that I had just made and then I reset the stop block so that the blade was lined up with my cut lines that I had made earlier that was the same thickness as the top of the stool. Then I just had to cut away and it removed all of the material for the perfect width of the tenon. Then I just repeated the same process on the other leg and I just love how easy and simple this process was to do. These tenons were perfectly sized. The only problem is that I made the mortise with a router. So the corners are round and these tenons, the corners are square. So I decided to round off the tenons instead of square up the mortise. I just think it's way easier to go with the grain instead of going across the end grain of the mortise. So I just paired away with the chisel up until I got what I thought would be a good fit. And of course the first try, it did not fit. So I just used this rasp and I refined the fit until finally everything fit really nicely together. So all the joinery is done, but I just wanted to add a little modern flair to it. So the shape was just a little too boxy for me. I wanted it to be a little bit sleeker so I just created these angles down the side just to what was pleasing to my eye and I took a jigsaw and I cut away at the excess and I cleaned it up on my belt sander and the spindle sander for the inside corners totally forgot that I wanted to make a template but whatever then I used a chamfer on my router table to just ease all the edges and for the underside of the top, I wanted a little bit more of a drastic bevel. So at first I started off with my regular 45 degree chamfer bit. Then I swapped out to a 30 degree bit and I held it up on its end to create more of a, a, like a deeper angle on the underside of the top. Then I sanded everything up to 180 and prepared it for finish. I decided to finish the maple using this India ink. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know why there's a mess behind me over there. So this stuff is water-based, which means that you need to raise the grain before you put the finish on, which means you wet it and then sand it to your final grit again so that the, you don't get little fuzzies. This is more like a dye than a stain, so it soaks into the wood, it does not sit on top of the wood, and you could still see all the grain. It's really cool looking. Then I sprayed on a couple of coats of satin lacquer and it was done. So I think this came out pretty cool. I think the X showing through the top is just really cool looking and the black perfectly matches the spalting on the maple. I think it's killer looking, but I'm really not sure what I'm going to use it for. A knockdown stool, a side table. I really just wanted to build this to show the difference between the video that I did for Family Handyman where I only used a jigsaw because I get a ton of comments where people say, if only I had all those tools, I could build that too. 
But here you see the same build, one with just using a jigsaw and one using all the tools that I have. And it's basically the same end product, just different materials. So never have the lack of tools be the reason why you don't go out and build something. And huge thank you again to this week's sponsors, 3-in-1 and Squarespace. The 3-in-1 oils help maintain my tools, which then improves my workflow. And I get asked all the time what I use to host my website, and I love to recommend Squarespace because I've been so happy with it for the past couple of years. It is so easy to customize your site, upload new content, and maintain everything, but right now I think the coolest feature is their app. You do not need to be tied down to a computer to upload new content and maintain your site. Being a mom, that is an amazing feature and I highly recommend it. So thank you guys again for watching and I will see you on the next project. No. How do you clean it up? How do you clean it up?